Do I really need to make a pun for this intro with the title of this movie? Once again, watchers of good movies, my name is Nick Pell, and this is once again coming from my apartment. Now today we are going to be talking about the film The Disappointments Room. This is a film which was apparently filmed back in 2014 and is now getting released. I don't remember seeing a single trailer for this movie, and it is a wide release movie. I didn't see a single trailer for The Ninth Life of Louis Drax last week, but that film was a very small theater count, so it made some sense. When you don't see a trailer for a horror film in September, and it's been in, the, in production, I guess post-production, for a number of years. It's not a great sign. Film stars Kate Beckinsale, Mel Rado, and Duncan Joyner as this family who moves into this mansion in the middle of nowhere, which is always a good idea. The mom has some mental issues which she is trying to escape from, get some peace and quiet from, and as a result, early, early on in the movie, she discovers this room in the attic which was not on any of the blueprints, and she opens it up, and it ends up being this disappointment room, and I'll get more into what that is in a little bit. Now I'll cover what this film does well before I get to what I did not like about it. The main thing which I think this film does really, really well is it covers the idea of mental illness because the main issue that Kate Beckinsale goes through over the course of this film is that she is, like I said, escaping from some sort of mental illness which she has suffered from in the past. And we don't really know exactly the extent of what that was, at least in the beginning. And throughout the film, she starts to see spirits and uh, ghosts and just people who used to live in the manor. And if it was any other horror film, you would think, oh yeah, these are definitely real things. But because she is suffering from this mental this mental illness and nobody else seems to be able to see these, these entities and is not experiencing anything weird in the house, you have to end up wondering, is she just seeing these things? Is it not real whatsoever? Is none of this stuff that's just happening to her actually reality? Or is it actually happening and they're just focusing on her as this person to haunt. And it does make for an interesting dynamic over the course of the film because, again, she keeps seeing these things which are happening uh, and yet no one else is experiencing them. So it does kind of fall into the category of kind of a mental illness type of state. Lights Out earlier this summer also tackled mental illness really well in regards to a mother uh, having to kind of uh, force herself to not rely on a certain entity or a certain kind of darkness in her life uh, in order to save her family. And this is kind of a similar type of situation in regards to the mental illness factor. And so I did enjoy that part of the movie. I thought that it was done pretty well. Now I haven't personally looked into disappointment rooms, but I would presume that it is a real thing which happened. But the idea is that back in the 1800s or early 1900s, families who were well off or very wealthy, if they had a child who had a, a mental disorder or a physical disorder of some sort, they would keep them locked into a room in the attic and just keep their existence a secret. They would feed them or have a, a well-trusted servant um, go and feed them daily and do what they needed to do, but they never got out of that room, they never interacted with anyone else socially, they never got to experience sunlight, they never got to experience rain, they never got to experience basically everything else that every other human being gets to experience generally in some point of their life. And so that's kind of the background behind the disappointment rooms um, in this movie. And I think it's an interesting concept and they do kind of interesting things with it, but then they never really focus on that aspect of the room for the entirety of the film because there's kind of a time uh, distortion factor which happens early on which I thought would have been a really interesting element of the film for them to use. They just don't choose to do that. It just happens once and then it just never gets touched on again. It just kind of bugged me. I will say that Kate Beckinsale did give a very good performance. Um, when she's focusing on kind of the mental disorder trauma which her character is experiencing, I thought she pulled that stuff off very, very well. There's a scene towards the end where she is drunk and you just see everything that she has been feeling just come out in a flood and it's just a really kind of a tough scene to watch honestly. And now the bad stuff. This one is actually quite boring. For a horror film that's not really a thing that you want to be able to say about it uh, but I found myself honestly kind of bored throughout at least the first hour of this movie because you would see things like crawling in the background and you never knew what they were because they never really showed themselves as an entity and the ghost didn't really do anything really scary. As an R-rated film, you would think that this film would take more liberties with its R-rating horror genre element, but it really just doesn't. It's more of just a very low-grade 
haunting movie, and that's kind of disappointing as a result. Part of that is the lack of horror payoffs, because there are times throughout the film where you see characters get killed, and then it's like, oh hey, they actually didn't get killed. And it's just, it makes you wonder, like, okay, why did they show us that if it didn't actually happen? It just, it didn't make sense to me as a result. Um, and then there's a lot of just open questions by the end of the film in regards to uh, this cat, which shows up, and it, it reveals itself to the kid at first and the kid says oh it's here to protect me and so you think that this cat is some sort of guardian against the spirits in the house and that just never becomes a big thing in the end like it happens kind of in the middle of the movie a little bit but it just never really gets explained past that point point. Um, and then there's just kind of characters that just disappear halfway through the film and it just it, there's just a lot of open-ended stuff which this film just doesn't decide to tie up which also, bug me. Maybe they wanted a sequel. This thing made $400,000 last year, yesterday, on Friday. Not gonna get a sequel. So guys, as a result, the disappointment serum was ultimately a disappointment. Uh, it covers the mental illness aspect, I thought, pretty well, with a horror element in the background. But outside of that, it just doesn't really do anything all that interesting. And it had a lot of things which it could have done really well, really interesting, and made the film actually quite fun as a result. But just doesn't choose to do that and it was just ultimately a disappointment. So guys those are my thoughts on the disappointments room. Let me know yours in the comments down below. Did you like it as much as I did? Did you hate it more than I did? Let me know. Like, fair comment, and subscribe once again if you so choose. I appreciate it immensely. And as always my people, my name is Nick Pell. And once again, keep on watching.